Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It's Friday once more, or at least the day that I posted this is Friday. And that means it's time once again for some obscurities and literature, and today we are bringing you the hard-hitting topics. We talk none other than breakfast, and I have before us the Great American Cereal Book. Funny thing, I've had this book for a few years, and for the longest time I thought it was just called the Cereal Book. And I kept wondering, well, how come they don't have any European cereals? Or how come they don't have any Japanese cereals? Or, you know, other Asian cereals? Just, I know Japanese ones. But anyway, it is the actual great American. And not North American, just American. And I love the setup of the book with the calorie and nutrition facts. And there is something worth pointing out. I hadn't noticed this before. But we have the... Serving size of six chapters, servings per container is one book with 368 pages. Uh, we have the contents right here, 100% sugar and nostalgia, 100%. Absolutely. So this is an interesting book. Uh, it is no means all-inclusive or exhaustive, and I'll be honest, I would love a follow-up book. Uh, I did a video ages ago on rack toys, and I probably picked this up about the same time, you know, kind of cheapskate stuff that you would find at the toy aisle in the supermarkets of the 70s through 90s, and even today to some degree. Um, and I just, I love the layout of this book, and I'll be honest, I'm not even a huge breakfast fan. Uh, if I eat breakfast, it's going to be probably something bread related which may not be the best options as it's a ton of carbohydrates but i love me some bread but i was always into cinnamon rolls uh cinnamon toast crunch was my jam back in the day love the sugar yeah never a big cereal eater so as the book says it is broken up into six chapters we have the beginnings in the 1800s we have the early days of the early 1900s, things getting boring during the war years, the baby boomer years when it really starts to take off, and then my era of everything in the 80s. The, the title, Make a Toy, Make a Movie, Make a Serial. That, that sums up that era quite nicely. It is kind of interesting seeing where the origins of some of these breakfast staples came from and how it all got started i mean it's almost like reading a a very in-depth wikipedia article but the authors absolutely did their research and it's kind of fun looking at the old advertisements i'll be honest i love old ads i love looking through those and i oh man 70s like late 60s early 70s art is my jam i love that stuff i absolutely despised it as a child but I've grown to appreciate it more and more so a lot of the early sections we have I mean I'm like if I saw that in the store I don't know if it's something that I would want to buy necessarily and I love how the book is set up we have the brands and it was first poured milked until and what's in it and then some of the various varieties obviously Cheero Cheerios I can't talk today a long-running one. I did not know they had an official mascot character back in the day. Kind of cool. Never like checks. Huskies! Okay. Just looking at the ads themselves, looking at how the, the product design... I, I, it shocks me that people would have wanted to purchase this. Digging that... I'd say like early 60s logo box for the, the kicks there. Yeah, it just says it's made in 1937, but based on the art, I'm going to say early to mid 60s. Good old California raisins. That's my era growing up. Bobby Sherman. That's got to be like late 60s, early 70s. I'm not even sure. Look at that dude's tongue. Looks like this outside, tastes like this inside. I don't know if that's what I want inside my body. Some weird cop dude licking his lips. I don't know what he is. Howdy doody. All right. 
Rice Krispies. This is the thing that honestly is my biggest minus with this book is I feel like there is an absolute gold mine of all the stuff that used to come in cereal boxes. Rice Toasties. And while there is some of it in this book, Wheat Honeys with Beetles Rub-Ons, 68. Buffalo Bee's Fun Page. Hi, I'm Buffalo Bill. Come visit me out here in the West. You'll need a galloping horse. We're going on a roundup. Here's how to get one. Good to know. See, look at we've got like cool little toys right here. I'm like, you know it's gonna come back to miniatures at some point or other on this channel. One way or the other, it always comes back to the minis. Good old Wheaties. Not the most exciting of boxes. We do get a bit of somewhere in this book. Zo. Okay, 1928. Some old ads. I'd almost kill to see a book of just the ads. Wheaties. I'm, I'm hoping those are blueberries, but I fear that they're raisins. I was gonna say somewhere in this, I knew we had a bunch of early Wheaties. Yeah, these are like 34, 37. A little before my time. Old school Lucky Charms. Check out that Alphabets box. Oh, that has got to be like pure late 60s, early 70s. Oh, yeah. Maybe early to mid, and then later. Brand Buds. All brand, brand buds. Good to hear. Still crunching. It's still around. Brand buds are still around. The modern laxative cereal in delicious, crisp new form. There you go. Didn't know you wanted to eat that, did you? Canton. What do we got in there? Ford Mustang inside. And it stays crunchy even in milk. Dang, check out all the various Captain Crunch flavors. That's a whole lot. I never did like Captain Crunch much. Look at these. See, there's there's a gold mine. I swear there's a gold mine sitting on this that the authors, if anybody ever want to go and ooh, cinnamon crunch, start making a book of nothing but all of the toys and goodies that you used to be able to send away for. Well, back in the day. I mean, you used to have the send aways, but also what's in the box. Like, check this sweet little set of swag out. This is from Depression Era post serials with FBI agent Melvin Purvis. See all the swell free prizes. Nice looking cap gun there. All the tin badges and stuff at the height of the depression. Pretty impressive. Cornflakes and strawberries. Country cornflakes. Special offer for crystal glass monogrammed crystal glasses. Crispy Critters. Never heard of it. Frosted Oat Flakes. Super Sugar Crisp. Ooh, these look kind of cool. Glow in the Dark Monster posters inside the box. I would begrudgingly eat Sugar Crisps every now and then. Didn't care for it much. Bite size, smaller, crunchier. 1968 license plate. See? This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. I loved how they had so much free junk, but that seems to be more in the heyday of like my parents' era than it was necessarily mine. Jets. Kaboom. Honey Munch. There's Kaboom. Cream Crunch. Combo. King Vitamin. And supposedly this is still around somewhere, but I've never seen him. Life Cereal with its boring flavor. I used to love the colors on the box. Always liked the aesthetics of it. Couldn't stay the flavor of it. Marshmallows. Marshmallows and stars. That's pretty cool. I just like those. Kellogg's OKs. Not great, but OKs. See, every now and then in this book we'll get like a little blurb of the various, you know, cartoons and comic strips that were in these. Favorite animated serial characters. 
Sparkled Flakes. I mean, some of this stuff sounds like just knockoff brands. And later on into the 70s era of the book, we get into all like the Ralston. The Ralston brands are where the real fun's at. We get into like, obviously, Cookie Crisp, Count Chocula, Country Crisp. Crazy cow. Freakies. With a free freaky inside. Not a bad deal. Frosted Rice. Not Frosted Freaks, but oh, it's Frosted Rice Krispies. Fair enough. Fruit Brew! Nature Valley Granola. Isn't this like the granola bars that the kids always have, like with the double packs? I think it is. There was a cereal called Norman. The name is a shame, but the taste is insane. Okay, yeah, it's straight from the 70s. Flintstones. When kids knew what the Flintstones were. Pink Panther Flakes. Vanilla Crunch. Not just vanilla, but vanilla with a sticky wiggy. Winnie the Pooh Great Honey Crunchers. It's a long name for a fat little bear. Let me get into some of the more modern stuff in here. Buzz Blasts. I just can't help myself. Huh. Cinnamon Toast Crunch didn't come around until 1984. That was always my favorite. Cinnamon Pop Tarts Crunch. Country in specialty. Common sense. What kind of a name? Some of these names, I mean, really feel like it's just stuff that. How did this come up? How did this happen? Ego. ET cereal. Fruit and fiber. Fruitful band. Fruit islands. The stereotypical natives. Oh, yumma yumma. Fruit wheats. Gremlins. I think I actually got a box of Gremlins at one point. I loved Gizmo as a kid. Hidden treasures. Which one holds a hidden treat? I don't know. Honey bunches of oats. There was a high school musical cereal and it lasted for over two years. Now, I'll be honest, every now and then, maybe not this brand, but I know every now and then my wife and I will get like one of these like trail mix type cereals. And those are actually pretty good. Hot Wheel cereal with a free car in the box. I feel like we had those a lot growing up. Ice cream cone cereal. What? Superior gumballs. Whoa, digital watch? Oh, with two proofs of purchase. Never mind. But you're going to hook me up for real. I like that the Jetson cereal came out in 1990. Because maybe that was the year that the show was... Supposed to be, oh, it says right here that it was based on a movie. Jiminy Cricket Wishing Stars! I did not know those existed, and they were only around in 1981. Kung Fu Panda Crunchers. Ken May Rice Bran. Okay, and it lasted for a couple years. I did not know we had Ken May Rice. Okay. Ofec Nola, Mickey's Magic, I kind of remember. Oh, good old Mr. T. Good morning, Mr. T. No, that's not his enemy. It's Mr. Breakfast. He asked Mr. Breakfast and Pee Wee's if he wanted to have some Mr. T. Morning Funnies. How many of these are still relevant? What a guy. I don't even know what that is. Mud and Bugs. Okay, I was going to say it's Timon and Pumbaa there. I remember these. Anybody else out there old enough to remember the Nintendo cereals? And I've skipped over so many cool things. There is a lot in here that I... I bought some Pac-Man cereal when I was a kid. I had Pac-Man fever. Maybe I still do. I don't know. Didn't know. Limited edition Polar Express cereal. Okay. Oh, Rainbow Bright. Mm -hmm. Again, Ralston. Ralston seems to be this brand that had a lot of the... buy-in, what is it, tie-in type promo cereals. Rocky Road ice cream. Strawberry shortcake. Sun Crunchers. It doesn't sound appealing. Sun Flakes. Ninja Turtles. Like, really? I kind of remember seeing Urkel O's as a kid. I wonder if anybody ever won that trip to uh, Washington, D.C. Definitely an interesting book. Like I said, I feel like there should be a follow-up book that just has all the crazy stuff that used to come in these. I think there's definitely worth uh, some appeal besides myself there. Maybe more the boomer era, but 
I don't know, fun book, especially if you dig some of these weird flavors. If you ever enjoyed some of these weird flavors, I'm going to put a link down below, hopefully for Amazon, if I can still find this book. Like I said, it's been a few years. Hell, maybe I, as far as I know, maybe there's another companion volume out there. But I will leave you with that as it's time to go sip my coffee. And you know what? Maybe I'll have some cereal myself. With that said, though, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. And thanks for watching. And we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.